warm mass welcome with her story, Indecision, to Paula Neves. So, the reason that my story is called Indecision is because Julie asked me to be a part of this, and I said, well, I'm used to telling other people's stories, not coming up with my own, so, well, let me think about it. So, um, as of this morning, I had four different narratives going. Um, and, um, and then when Julie called this afternoon just to see if there were last minute things to take care of, she said, well, you know, do you have a title? I said, no, no, eh, not really, but she said, well, you know, do you have anything about holidays? I said, well, that was one option. I could probably talk about something. So, Sue started talking, and, and then I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't have picked this one, <laughs> because it starts out similar to yours. When your birthday is? December 28th, the day of Holy Innocence. All right, so, so we'll see how this goes. I was born three weeks late, and some of you have, who have been involved with uh, productions or, or working here with me know that sometimes I wait till the last minute. And so I can blame that on being three <laughs> weeks late. Yeah. Um, and if I had been born three weeks and one day late, my entire life would have changed. Now, you probably have had something happen in your life or know somebody who, for example, um, they were sick the day that the World Trade Center was attacked. And so they escaped that. <coughs> or they um, missed their flight or maybe because they got caught in traffic, they weren't in that big accident down the road. But I was born three weeks late, but not three weeks and one day late, because my birthday is New Year's Eve. And when I was born, the, the uh, policy in the Minneapolis public school system was you had to be five by January 1st of the school year. So, I started school when I was four years old in September. And had that one more day happened, I would have met entirely new people. I probably would not have met my wonderful husband because I was introduced to him by somebody who had a temporary position at the church that I went to. So all of these little things changed. Um, Having a holiday birthday sucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it does. Um, here's your Christmas and birthday present. <laughs> um, yeah, for those of you who grew up babysitting, when's the best time to babysit and make lots of money? New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. So I spent many a year spending time with other people's kids and hoping that when they came home, they weren't too drunk to safely take me home <laughs> after, after the party. Um, my father, who was an iron worker, if you know what that is, that's where you're up on the tall beams doing all these things, and he worked outside all the time. He was a very hard worker. Um, we were so excited when we found out that he was one of the people who was going to install the window washing equipment on the top of the IDS building. So he worked up high, he worked outside all year round, and he worked very hard. And one of his passions was fishing. Fishing in the summer, fishing in the winter. What's the best time to take off from work is the holidays. So he would go ice fishing over my birthday. Wow. Yeah. This is sounding very sad and <laughs> self-pitying. Uh, of course, it's also, there's no school. So you're not with your school friends and they probably don't live close enough to come over for your birthday party. So my mother would make the, the traditional cake, which was the doll in the center of the cake that had the poopy dress, right? That was what I got every year, which was fine. My sister was five years older, so she wasn't really the best company because I was the pesky kid. My brother was five years younger, and he was even worse. <laughs> He's the only one that turned out well. <laughs> nice. Uh, I remember one birthday in particular, and because I'm old, um, the memory is a little skewed.
skewed because maybe it was a time when my friends were like trying to be nice and gave me a half birthday party. Oh. It could have been. Because I was older, I was working at a bakery, which sounds like a really great thing to do, except, you know, like if you've been at the coffee shop too long, how your clothes smell like coffee shop. Uh -huh. Well, when you work at a bakery, you smell way too sweet. <laughs> <laughs> way too sweet. Uh -huh. And my friends had managed this, they came up with this surprise party idea. And when I worked, I worked a weird shift. I worked either three or four in the morning until 11 or 12, because that's when we needed to prep all the food and so forth. So I came home from work, probably around noon, one o'clock in the afternoon, and my mom said, oh, hey, Kim wants you to come over to her house. And I said, oh, I'm tired, I don't really want to do She really wants you to come over, and so uh, just, just go. Well, I'm in my bakery clothes, and I smell very sweet. <laughs> no, just go over. And they were having a surprise birthday party for me mm. in my bakery stained chocolate <laughs> <laughs> And we played 31, I think it was. So we had 14 kids tossing cards across to play. So if you happen to have somebody who has a birthday close to a holiday, give them a half birthday party, <laughs> but let them know about it ahead of time. <laughs> much better. Hey, Paul, if there's only one birthday that's worse than yours, what's that? Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. No? February 29th. Uh. <laughs> Tara could tell a story about that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>